uh, for people to read as people are coming in as well. Um, so those are the disclaimers. Please read them, um, even if you need to sort of pause it to read it if I go off the screen too quickly. Um, obviously, just want to make sure that you guys understand what you can expect from these kind of videos and these kind of sessions. Uh, essentially, I'm going to show you how we approach the markets, um, trades that we might take that fit our, our rules. Uh, but of course, you're going to have your own trading rules, your own risk profiles, your own ideas. Ultimately, it's up to you which trade you place, uh, if any. Okay. Brilliant. Nice. Nice to, to see you, like I said, Ray uh, and Laurie as well. So welcome. OK, so for those of you that are joining, uh, just to let you know, and I will repeat this message throughout as more people join. Um, these sessions are always better if you guys tell me what markets you want to look at, what time frames you want to look at, uh, what concepts you want me to go over. Um, obviously, want to make sure you guys get the most out of this as possible. Uh, the more quiet the, the chat box, the more I'll just kind of go down my own rabbit holes um, and do whatever time frames I think make sense and do whatever um, markets I think people want to look at. But of course, those of you that are watching know best what you want to see. So you just let me know in the chat box and I will be led by you. OK. So usually what we do is we'll go through trades that we've placed in the past and see what happened to them. Um, now, I thought for today, unless you guys want me to do that, considering we have 45 minutes, it makes more sense to just jump straight in um, and look at some new trades that we want to be placing. So that's what I'm going to be doing is looking at that. Now, first and foremost, just want to uh, let you know where you can go for support or help. If you're watching this um, recorded as well, then you'll know where to go if you have questions. So you've got my email address there which is becky at tradictive.com and then there is support at tradictive.com as well so you can use that now there's also another place you can go which is trade with ufos.com forward slash becky from here you can get different apps and platforms you can book one-on-one -on -one coaching and if you scroll down you'll notice there's a bunch of questions and answers that you might be able to get answers to your questions from um, or if not you can log in for free and post the question that you said Okay, now firstly what I want to do, and apologies for not loading this before, is have a look at our economic calendar from FX Street. Why? Because we want to know which scheduled news reports are coming out that could affect the markets that we'll be trading. Now let's just filter this. We're going to filter by the main um, currencies that we would be trading. So I'm going to take out individual countries within this and just look at the European Union. Uh, um, we'll keep Ukraine in there because, of course, that's uh, going to affect everything that we're looking at. Uh, I've unticked China as well because we won't be trading the yuan. Now, I'm also going to make sure that we tick or check high impact news only. So we don't want to be looking at lower impact news. It's less likely to have an impact and therefore less relevant. So we'll look at the week ahead just to give us um, some detail that obviously uh, today we've got some news coming out. This is my time, so coming out in a few hours uh, around the US dollar uh, or, or US markets and later on today with the New Zealand dollar. So be aware of that if you trade those markets that we might see some volatility as a result of these news reports coming out. Now, we'll look at the US dollar pairs first, the majors. Uh, we tend to do that anyway. Uh, but just bear in mind, if there is if there are, is going to be a lot of news coming out over the coming hours on the US dollar, you might not want to double up and place loads of trades on the US dollar just because volatility in that currency can, of course, have volatility across all of those pairs. And then that's not obviously very good for us. OK, so. For me, what I do in order to find opportunities is I use scans to help me make this a little bit more efficient. So these scans are looking through markets and essentially coming back and showing us where we have opportunities that are close by and where we have opportunities that would be worth our time to look at. That doesn't mean we place those trades. Uh, it just means that it's filtering down what we look at in a little bit more of an efficient way uh, rather than look through each individual uh, pair and each individual time frame before we find something. Now, I'm going to start with the higher time frames. So I'm going to start with the daily time frames and I'm going to start with the US dollar side of things. Uh, that's just because obviously most people trade majors. And for me personally, I personally believe Forex makes more sense on bigger time frames. Not to say money can't be made on smaller time frames. Uh, it's just, in my opinion and my experience, a little bit harder to do. So I'll start with the higher time frames. So. Basically, we have over here, for those that haven't seen this before, um, and apologies for those that have, because you know how this works, but for those that haven't, just to highlight what we're looking at here. We have a near sensible 
opportunity. That's what that says there. It's highlighted in yellow because it's near and it's sensible, meaning it wouldn't be a bad thing to look at. This is the Aussie US dollar. So that's what we're going to go and take a look at. And I'm going to use MetaTrader to go and have a look at this one. Okay, so let's bring this up. MetaTrader. So we're looking at the Aussie US dollar. So let's just bring this on. And we are using a daily chart on the left hand side. That's our climate. Uh, and therefore we are going to be using, we would be using uh, either a 55 minute chart in some cases. In this case, based on what MetaTrader shows us, we'll use an hourly chart and then we'll see if we've got uh, anything here. Now, for the time being, we don't actually have anything here. So I am going to uh, flip between time frames uh, just to see if we can find uh, a decent opportunity. And I'll explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it as I do it. OK, so uh, we actually have on a daily chart on the Aussie US dollar using MetaTrader, we actually don't have any probabilities to the downside here. This might be a little bit small, so let me make this bigger. Great. So you see here we've got different thicknesses of dots we've got blue dots red dots some are thick some are thin if it's a thick dot that tells us probability is confirmed in that direction so thick red is probability confirmed down thick blue is probability confirmed up <laughs> that's on our app auto climate which by the way is free on most platforms you can use it on if it's a thin dot of either color that tells us that the climate is unconfirmed it doesn't really know what it's doing and if it doesn't really know what it's doing then we don't want to be trading it um, you know you don't want to be trading without clear probabilities in one direction or the other so i'm actually going to leave this before we even go anywhere further on this i'm going to leave this and i'm not even going to look uh, for more opportunities because i don't want to trade something that doesn't have clear probabilities now, of course, with Forex, we've got different brokers that will all give us slightly different prices, slightly different spreads, and therefore slightly different probabilities. With the data that TradeStation is using, it's showing me that the Aussie dollar does have a thick red dot on the, on the daily chart. And it might well do uh, on, on that feed with that data, those prices. Considering we're looking at MetaTrader to have a look at our US dollar pairs, you need to be trading based on the data that your broker shows you because that's where you're going to be executing the trades. So hopefully uh, that makes sense. Oh, no problem, uh, Laurie, have fun. Uh, I missed her anyway, she said goodbye and I didn't see it. <laughs> okay, so we'll come back here and we'll look at uh, perhaps <clears throat> smaller time frames here on the US dollar pairs. So let's take a look at the Euro US dollar on a four hour chart and see if we have any opportunity there. So if it's four hour on the left, then we will look at a 30 minute or a one hour on the right, maybe even a 15 minute. As long as the one on the right is smaller than the one on the left without being too far away, that's all that matters. What a lot of people do, and I understand why, especially when we first start trading, is that we'll fix ourselves to, it's got to be, for example, it's got to be a four hour chart on the left and it's got to be a 30 minute chart on the right and that's it. Um, and that's okay. The one on the left does need to be more strict. It's taking a while to load, isn't it? If not, we'll go and have a look at trading view. There we go. Um, the one on the left does need to be more strict because the one on the left is going to show you your specific uh, style. If you are a swing trader or a position trader, then the one on the left needs to be the bigger time frames daily, weekly, monthly. If you're a day trader, then the one on the left needs to be smaller time frames, five minute, 15 minute, maybe 60 minute. The one on the right just needs to be smaller. As long as it's smaller than the one on the left, it doesn't matter. And as long as it's relatively close by, you don't want to use a weekly on the left and a one minute on the right. They're too far away from each other. But we use the one on the right to help us determine specifically where we might be trading. So for today, let's see if we have an opportunity and then we'll take this through and place the trade. So 1.0976. Okay, so what I'm looking at here, we have a thick blue dot, probability upwards, meaning we should be looking to buy. Now we don't just buy anywhere, we buy where we have probabilities. We define where we have probabilities as where we have these little green UFOs. UFO in this, state, in this case stands for unfilled orders. And what it does is show us where buyers are if it's green. If it's red, it shows us where sellers are. 
So we want to be buying with buyers because it gives us more probability that price goes up. Now, not just that, we want to be buying with buyers and more buyers if we can. And this is why we use our EMA number from our bigger time frame to help us out. So the EMA number today, right now, is one point, if we just freeze that for a second, 1.0975. I'm just going to go to the pip there. So 1.0975, which is here. <laughs> very, very close to current price. Now, very, very close to the current price, and we don't have any green UFOs near there. The closest green UFO is down here, meaning they're not lining up on this time frame. Now, that's okay. Uh, you could just take the UFO. You could just trade at the EMA. But for us, we want to make sure that we combine these probabilities. So for us, there is no uh, probability on this time frame. What I'm going to do is just flip to a slightly smaller time frame, see if there's anything close by. Again, we'll notice that there's no UFOs around that price area, uh, 1.0976. We will have a look at the hourly. Again, nothing there, no trades to be done. Again, you could be less strict. You could just take the UFO, just take the EMA. You could use Fibonacci's, you could use whatever you use. For us, we want to make sure that we're combining our probabilities to give us extra chance that, that the trade works out for us. So we're going to come and look at the next opportunity, which is going to be the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. See if there's anything there. If there isn't, we'll move on to our, our cross pairs and we'll move on to looking at trading view as well. So I want to use different brokers and different platforms for those of you that do look at uh, different brokers and different platforms. OK, so this has taken a while to load again. But whilst it's loading, let's find out where our moving average price is today. So the Exponential moving average, which we've programmed in here, is 118.18, .18, which is there. Again, on the one hour chart, we don't have any green UFOs around there. So let's have a look at the hour. Oh, wrong one, sorry. Let's look at the 30 minutes. That's four hours. Oh, sorry, <laughs> clicking about all over the place. Four hours on the left, 30 minutes on the right. Again, no UFOs around that area. Let's look at the 15 minute, see if we can find something. If not, we'll move on and look for a new opportunity. If it loads. I don't know about you guys, I probably shouldn't say this because I know a lot of people use uh, MetaTrader and, and love it. I'm not a fan. I, I think it's really clunky and really hard to use. So I prefer to use TradingView. Um, but I want to show you guys what these UFOs look like and things on MetaTrader in case you are using it. So we've now looked at three different time frames on the right hand side and none of them show us green UFOs that look like this ish. <laughs> none of them show us a green UFO that coincides with the EMA number. So we move on. Now, let's see if we can move a little bit quicker and see if we can find some opportunities on our cross pairs. So we'll start with the Euro Canadian and we'll come to trading view to do this now. So Euro Canadian. Again, I'm just going to look at FXCM data. So, of course, if you're trading with different data that gives you different prices, you might not have the same probabilities. So be aware of that. Be careful about that. OK, we <laughs> we literally just miss out on an opportunity on this time frame. Um, so it's four hours on the left. Uh, one hour on the right. So let's now look at a 30 minute. Um, just miss out there. And what we'll do now, because we can actually use Fibonacci timeframes on trading view, we'll see that. Okay, so we have an opportunity on this time frame. We have an opportunity on this time frame. And we have an opportunity on this time frame. I'm going to go for the hourly. And the reason I'm going to go for the hourly is because it gives us a greater uh, buffer, a greater buffer. Um, now, saying this, and apologies, I know this might be frustrating, we haven't put a trade on yet. We cannot place this trade, and let me explain why. So again, for those of you that use this technology, you'll understand why if this happens to you. So we have a thick red dot, probability is down. We have a red UFO that coincides with our EMA number. EMA number is 1.3990, which is here, nicely in between this UFO. So we have probability down, sellers and sellers. Brilliant. Why am I taking this trade then? Because 
on our bigger time frame, on the four hour chart. I've just realized I've made a mistake there, guys. We're looking at a daily chart on the left hand side. So scratch those things and we'll come back to, to looking at this uh, and taking that in. Let me just explain what I was explaining just in case we were using these time frames. We have buyers here. So if you were using the four hour chart to tell you probability was down, but you've got buyers very close, close to you, then it kind of cancels it out. You've got probability down and probability up at the same place. So you wouldn't want to take the trade. Saying that, we were looking at a daily chart anyway. So scratch what I just said. So on a daily chart, we have the EMA at 1.4021, which is here. Now that is in between two UFOs. However, as price comes up, then the EMA will also move up. It's a moving average. It tracks price. So as price comes up, the EMA also moves up, likely meaning that by the time price enters our UFO, if it enters our UFO, it will align with the EMA. So we have probability here on the uh, hourly chart. However, we're going to have to take a bunch of these UFOs together because they all overlap. So let's look at the 55 minute, which is a Fibonacci time frame. See if we can tidy that up a little bit. So notice as I've switched time frames to the 55 minute, we've lost a bunch of UFOs here. So we actually don't have anything lining up um, on the 55 minute. So we'll go back to the hour and we will take the UFO that starts 1.4030, which is here. And we'll have to put our stop above this top one. Reason for that is if your entry is here and your stop loss is here, then you're going to be buying out of a sell position amongst lots of sellers. Why would you buy amongst lots of sellers? Lots of sellers are likely to push the price down. So we don't want to buy then. We want to be selling, which means we want to put our stop quite far away from this bunch of, um, of sellers that we have on top of each other. Just seen there a question from Mohammed. Where could you find this indicator auto climate? So Mohammed, if you go to either tradewithufos.com forward slash Becky, and then you can see the different um, platforms that you can get auto climate on. It's free on most platforms you can use it on. Sometimes, uh, this is my, my link, sometimes this um, glitches. So if you go to apps from that, tradewithufos.com forward slash apps, and then you can come down and you can see. So for example, on TradingView, auto climate is free. Um, it's got an activation fee, which you can waive. You can email us for that. On MetaTrader, if you have auto UFOs, then auto climate is free. If not, $21 a month. If you have TradeStation, again, it's free. So depending on which platform you use, you can then go to our website, click on the platform that you want and go from there. And like I said, most of them are free. Okay, coming back to our Euro Canadian. Let me just draw on the chart what we're doing so it makes it easier to see. We are going to use these, um, just spread this out a little bit, see if we can see any buyers on here. I don't think we can, so we'll have a trailing stop there. So we are going to use the UFOs that we have here to guide us in our entry and stop prices. So our entry is going to be 1.4030, which is rounding down this number here, which is the start of that UFO, where we first see sellers that coincide with our EMA price. Now our stop loss, we're going to use the top of these UFOs. So the last place that we find sellers, and that's at 1.41613. So we'll round that up to 1.4162. And then we're going to add five pips of wiggle room, which makes that 1.4167. And we'll add a couple of pips for the spread as well. So 1.4169. So the black line is our entry. The red line is our stop. We're going to place two targets. The first target will be one to one away. So whatever the distance is between here and here, will be the same difference between our entry and target. And our second target in this case is going to be a trailing stop. Why? Because we have no buyers on this time frame that we can use as a reference. Normally, if we had a green UFO here, then this would be where we put our target. We put our target just before the buyers come in because the only thing that can stop sellers is buyers. So we'd want to get out before the buyers on our bigger time frame but we don't see them. So we're gonna have a trailing stop instead. So our entry 1.4030, 
our stop loss 1.4169 i'm going to risk 50 bucks on it either side of the trade just as a, a reference an example you guys risk whatever you want to risk if you're taking it our target is going to be 1.3891 great and then we'll place that trade now the other half of the trade same entry so 1.4030 same stop loss which it would have remembered same risk it's obviously rounded it down to 49 dollars and 99 cents that's fine by me and we just won't tick take profit we'll have a trailing stop so if we put that in what that means is if price comes in and triggers into our trade and starts to move in our favor but then creates a new red ufo this price comes down then our stop loss moves from here to behind this red ufo continues again creates a new red ufo then our stop loss moves from here to behind the new red ufo that's what we'll do to manage this trade lock in profit if we're right if we're wrong and it goes straight through then we risk what we were willing to risk which in this example case it was a hundred dollars okay so that's the first trade that we've put on just going to make a reference for myself here so i remember uh, to come back later and see what happens to it so i can show you guys on the next session right let's come back to trade station and see if we can find um, some new new probabilities so we looked at the euro canadian i'm not going to look at the euro new zealand straight away because that would be doubling up on the euro so let's look at the there's nothing nothing more here actually let me explain why so we have near sensible for one two three four five we don't want to look at near hopeful we don't want to be trading in a hopeful manner we want to be trading in a sensible manner so we have five of these opportunities that are near and sensible now only three of them actually have confirmed probability either down or up so we will look at the swiss franc versus the japanese yen and see what we have there so on the left hand side we have our daily chart and on the right hand side we will look at a few time frames before we find one that gives us a decent opportunity so the ema number is 125.38 which is there so on the one hour chart we don't have anything that lines up let's have a look at the 55 minute chart again remembering that the ema price is 125.38 which is here nothing on this time frame either it's in white space between buyers and then let's have a look here at our two hour chart as well see what's going on there okay so we've now looked at a few different time frames within a range we haven't found anything that lines up so we don't trade it we don't want to trade where we don't have our probabilities lining up for us now let's have a look at the euro new zealand now what i want to to do as a caveat to this looking at the euro new zealand is that we need to bear in mind that if we place the trade on the euro canadian and then we place a trade on the euro new zealand and something unexpected happens with the euro that affects both of our trades we're kind of doubling up the risk here um, now depends what we do because in fact here we don't have any probability down let's have a look at oanda data okay so on oanda we have probability down so let's have a look at that again you need to do what your broker is telling you in terms of data and prices because that's the one you're executing with so on the euro new zealand daily on the left and then we'll look at first of all the one hour on the right we have thick red dot probability down if you're using oanda or trade station data the ema is 1.6174 which is just here which is just inside this ufo here now again what we'll have to do is combine these couple of ufos here just because they're, they overlap with each other they're very close together so we'll put these two together and we'll have a look at that so let's do that oh i think i was looking at the wrong i was looking at the wrong numbers apologies for that this is 6174 that was 6274 so 6174 is there it's actually very very close to current price no sell ufos around us there let me make this bigger and make it easier to see 
So sorry, 6174, which is, like I said, around about here. So we've got no red UFOs in that area on the one hour or the 55 minute. Let's look at the two hour. We are in luck. We have uh, a UFO there. So let's draw this out and let's see if we have room on our bigger time frame to take this with us. And I don't think we do. So let me explain what I mean here. So we talked about this before as a hypothetical. This is now a practical uh, problem that we need to overcome. So we would have a thick red dot, probability down. We have sellers with sellers. Oh, my mouth is being weird. So we have our EMA price within our sell UFO. So we have sellers and sellers in the context of a downwards climate. Therefore, why wouldn't we take this trade? Because our risk is roughly this size, this size. If we project that again forwards, you'll see that our first target, which is meant to be a safety target, one to one away, starts to fall within a bunch of buyers. Those buyers start at 1.6115. Our target would likely be 1.6140 or 1.6110 or something like that. So we would be falling inside buyers. We don't want to be falling inside buyers. We want to get out before the buyers could change their mind. Otherwise, let's say we get triggered very quickly. Oh. We get triggered very quickly. Price comes in, hits our entry, moves off, hits the buyers and moves off against us before we have chance to take our target. We don't want to do that. It's not worth doing. It's a waste of our, of our time and our risk. So we move on. Now, I know a lot of this, some people, they watch this and they go, oh, you don't take more trades than you do. Um, and to me, I would argue that's how it should be. The reason for that is because if we're taking trades for the sake of taking trades, when they don't have probabilities in our favor, we're more likely to, you, to lose. And if you're more likely to lose, what's the point? <laughs> Why would you want to be trading where you have more probability of losing simply for the sake of being able to place a trade because you want to place a trade? I'd rather rule out a bunch of trades, only place trades that have higher probability and therefore give myself more chance of winning. By the way, that doesn't mean definite will win, right? We never know what's going to happen. We manage our risk just in case. But even bearing that in mind, we want to make sure we have as much probabilities in our favor as we can, or as many probabilities in our favor as we can. Okay, so on a four hour chart, Swiss franc versus the Japanese yen, we have thick blue dot probability upwards. We have our EMA price at 125.76, okay, which is here. Now, this is too far away from our UFO right now. So let's have a look at a different time frame and see if we have anything closer. So we had nothing on the 21 minute, which is the Fibonacci price, nothing on the 30 minute, nothing on the one hour. And let's just, for the sake of it, have a look at 15 minutes as well. So we've looked at four different time frames on the right hand side. Nothing is lining up. Therefore, we do not play for it. Next one, let's try and move through quicker. So this is pound New Zealand now, showing us probabilities here. So let's have a look. Pound New Zealand. Now, considering we've placed a, um, let's try a rounder. Considering we've placed a Euro Canadian, I'm more comfortable to place a pound New Zealand because it has nothing to do with it. Completely different market, right? Completely different probabilities. Okay, so we are in trouble before we start. And that's because we are currently within buyers. So the current price is here, sort of there. For some reason my mouse is being weird. There you go, so current price is there. Buyers already started above us and finish here. So we are currently within buyers. So what we have right now is a fight going on. We have probability down, so selling, pushing down right now. And we have buyers that are pushing up right now. Who's going to win? Couldn't tell you. We don't want to be getting involved in fights, right? 
one of these sides are going to win we don't know which side that's going to be we're taking a punt we're taking a guess if we were to place a trade going in one direction or the other so again to me no point we don't want to be trading where we don't have probabilities um so weirdly this is moving quickly on our probabilities here we now don't have anything else here that we can be looking at what we'll do is we'll look at the dollar swiss on a 60 minute time frame so that's quite a small time frame um I personally wouldn't recommend trading on time frames that small on your left hand side because if that's on your left hand side then your right hand side is likely to be um, something as small as eight minute chart or five minute chart which means your zones are smaller your areas between your entry and stop are smaller um, sorry Swiss Frank and if the area between your entry and stop is smaller, um, then you're less likely or you're more likely to be stopped out, even if you're right. Um, I prefer to give us a little bit extra room here. So let's look at the five minute chart, see if we have anything here. Mm, nope, nothing on the eight minutes. Look at the 10 minute. OK, nothing there. And the reason for that, our EMA is 0 0.9404 which is here of course price is quite close to that it's likely to hit the ema before it hits our ufo and we want them to hit at the same time or like you know hit the ufo if the ema is in between it okay so considering the scan we've kind of exhausted the different opportunities that we did have on the scan here we've looked at all of these on their respective time frames just got a new one here which is dollar yen so let's look that look at that and then what we'll do is we'll go back up to weekly time frames we'll go the other side at the moment these would be looking for day trades but let's have a look at this see what we have if we don't have anything then we will look for bigger time frame uh, swing positions okay price has literally just crossed the ema i'm not sure if you've seen that there so the ema is the blue line the red line here is where price is. So price has just crossed the EMA, which means we would want to have um, a UFO that was literally where we are right now, uh, which we don't we don't see. So again, no probabilities there. Let's now take this then to a weekly chart on the left hand side. We're going to use let's use different data because that's trades that we've placed before. So let's have a look. Okay, so we'll use FXCM data. We'll look at a weekly on the left hand side and a 144 slash four hour chart slash two hour chart on the right hand side. Okay, let's look at FXCM data as well, see what we've got. So here we have uh, an EMA number at 116.08. Obviously, that's quite far away, quite far away. It's got to drop quite a bit to get there. So I'd say we'll actually move on from that, look at a different option again if you guys have specific time frames and specific markets that you want to look at by all means tell me and we'll go and have a look um, so you can direct me towards what you want um, what you want to see okay so same thing here with our, our british pound us dollar we've just looked at price is quite far from the ema quite far a good 300 pips away which means by the time it moves up quite a lot of things could have changed so we won't we won't look at that Ideally, we want one that's reasonably close. Uh, is that what's here? That's reasonably close to the EMA. This is about 150 pips away. That's not too bad on that time frame. Because in that way, we have less chance of things going wrong by the time we actually get into the trade. So 1.1146. Lovely. That falls nicely in here. Now, yes, as price moves up, so too will the EMA. If the EMA falls out of this area, then we cancel the trade. If it stays in that area, then we keep the trade on. Let's just have a look at a bigger time frame and see if we do have 1.1146, which is there. Nothing on the four hour. Four, six. The two hour shows us the same as the 144. So we'll use this area. Brilliant. So let's place this trade. Now we don't need to group these two UFOs together, even though they're close to each other. And the reason that we don't need to do that 
is because the EMA falls within the second UFO. If the EMA fell within the first UFO, then we take both of them. But there's no point selling lower down than we need to. You can if you want to, if you want to give yourself a little bit of an extra space there, but I would say it's, it's unnecessary. So our entry will be 1.1140. Our stop loss will be 1.11779, round up to 78. Add two pips for the spread, add five pips for wiggle room. Brilliant. Okay, so you notice there, if we look at it on the, on the weekly chart, we can see that it's just encompassing the EMA with room for the EMA to move up as price moves up. So this is the trade that we're going to place here. So 1.1140 is our entry price. Stop loss is 1.1185. I'm going to do 50 bucks of risk again. Again, you guys can choose what you want to risk, depending on what makes you comfortable, what fits your plan. Of course, don't take the trade at all if it doesn't fit your plan. Our first target is one to one away at 1.1095. Our second target will be based off of this green UFO because we took the trade because on a weekly chart we had probability down. So if, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, if on a weekly chart we have probability down, then the only thing that can stop weekly probabilities to the downside, weekly buyers pushing to the upside, they don't come in until 1.06776. So what we'll do is we'll give it a little bit of room to say 1.067, uh, 1 1.0680. So round it up and give it a couple of pips so that we get out just before the buyers come in. So we'll put our first trade on. Second one, same entry, same stop loss, same risk. And our profit target is now going to be 1.0680. Now that's a 10 to 1. Now, considering we're taking a one to one and then a 10 to one as part of the same trade, two different targets, it will average out somewhere in the middle at like a five, six to one if we were to be right on this trade. If price were to come in, hit our safety target and then go against us, we would break even. If price comes straight through and stops us out, then we lose. We lose whatever we were risking. If price comes in, moves away, hit our safety target, continues down, and finally hits our final target, we would average a profit at a five, six to one. Now, of course, if things change by the time this happens, let's say by the time, we move it so we can see that, spread it out a bit, let's say by the time price got to our entry, the EMA was now here, well, we cancel the trade then. So monitor it on its way, it's a weekly chart, so you don't need to monitor it any more than once a day for 30 seconds just to see where that EMA is. If it's still within that area, great, place the trade or keep the trade on. If it moves from outside of that area, cancel the trade. Similarly, if the auto climate changes, then cancel the trade as well. Okay, so we've now placed two trades and I know it's taken a while to get two trades on, but we've had the Euro Canadian, uh, which was, I believe, a short. Um, on a daily chart for our bigger time frame. We're now looking at the Euro US dollar, and this is a weekly chart for our higher time frame. Um, now, it, it is two, or we have placed two Euro trades, one Euro Canadian, one Euro US dollar, different time frames, but the same currency pair, or same currency. So be aware of that, is that you're doubling up on the Euro there. If something crazy were to happen with the Euro, then something crazy is likely to happen with your trades. Let's take a quick look before we round off, quick look and see if we do have any new opportunities to look at. It doesn't look like it. I think we've looked at all of these. We have, so nothing more in terms of the scan to dictate to us what we should be trading. Let's randomly uh, place, let's have a look at New Zealand yen. Let's have a look at random time frames, random markets. It's too far away. That are nothing to do with the euro uh, so that we can uh, see if we've got any other opportunities perhaps. So you see here, that's a really big jump between where price is and, and where the EMA is. So by the time price got up to our ideal trading price, a lot could have changed. Um, so Swiss, uh, Swiss, New Zealand, let's do that. 
again, very far away, 300 pips or so. Let's do Swiss franc or Swiss yen, sorry. We already have one in before. Let's have a look at our XCM for that. Okay, that's not too bad. So let's see if we have Swiss franc, Japanese yen, see if we have anything here, and then we'll round up. By the way, as well, we do sometimes do cryptocurrencies on these um, sessions. Uh, so if you guys want to see more cryptos, I tend to focus on spot forex, um, obviously regulated market, safer and all that. So I tend to focus on that. If you'd rather I look at cryptocurrencies in more depth, you just let me know. We can look at them kind of fall into the same category. OK, so on the Swiss franc, we've got nothing on our time frames, really. So Swiss franc, Japanese yen, nothing on our time frames, really, on the right hand side that's showing us a good opportunity. So let's take a look at the very easy one to look at Bitcoin versus the US dollar and see what's going on here. So let's look at the daily chart and let's then look at the 55. So with Bitcoin on a daily chart, we have a thick blue dot probability up with the EMA at 39,528, which actually falls nicely right in there on our 55 minute chart. So I'll tell you what, let's place this trade before we finish. We've got room to take it to its profit. Let's put that in. So our entry is going to be 39,613.34. I'm going to round that up to 39,615. I'm a lot more vague uh, with cryptocurrencies than I am with Forex because the spreads are wide. It's a lot more volatile. I want to give it a lot more room. So I tend to just round it to nice round numbers. For example, our stop loss, let's make it 39,300. So we've given ourselves more room in terms of pips than we would um, in Forex, in spot Forex, because it's a lot more of a volatile market. So we give ourselves a little bit more space to be wrong, or actually space to be right, but not be stopped out because price has moved crazily. Okay, we will do $50 of risk again, same as always. Our first target is always going to be as far away as our risk. So in this case, 39,930. So we'll put that in. And we'll put the second half of the trade in. So same entry, which is 39,615. Same stop loss, same risk. And our profit target is going to be 43,000. Uh, let's do 43,340. 43,340. So that's an 11 to 1, takes our profit target to here, just before the sellers come in. And we'll see what happens with Bitcoin. So we've now placed three trades, uh, one euro US dollar, one euro Canadian, one Bitcoin versus US dollar. Um, of course, different um, asset classes as well here, but we're sticking to currencies. Um, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys that trade maybe both of those things. Um, I know it took us a while to get to some trades, but like I said, I would much rather uh, place trades that have more probability because everything's lining up than place a trade for the sake of filling time or for the sake of placing a trade. If you have questions, the best place to go is tradewithufos.com forward slash Becky, because from that link, uh, you'll notice once it loads, from that link, you can get up some platforms, you can book coaching. If you come down, you can log in for free and ask a question here, and I will answer it there. Or you might find that there's other questions there that people have asked, and therefore the answer is already there. And therefore, you don't need to ask me. So um, this is a place you can go for lots of help. If not, email me, becky at predictive.com. Always happy to help. Always happy to answer any questions you guys have. So that brings us to the end of our session. I think I'm one minute overdue. Um, so not bad in terms of timing. Um, yeah, Raya, yeah, I, I, I get it. It's, uh, I miss being around traders uh, as much as we could physically be back then. But yeah. Um, hopefully these online sessions obviously help to, to fill the gaps and, and to create these communities of traders, uh, which is really, really important when we're trading to have people around us that, that get it and that help us out. OK. All right. Thank you very much to um, for um, F FX Street. I was going to say Forex Street, but FX Street um, to the admin as well. And thank you guys for joining me. I will see you next time.
Take care.